uh, this spot in, in northeastern Montana is um, really a, a unique setting to do science relating to the KT mass extinction event on land and its recovery. Uh, there are actually very few places in the world that you can put your finger on the KT boundary and you have fossils below and fossils above them representing those animals that lived before the mass extinction event and those that lived after the mass extinction event. And here in Montana, we have um, the Hell Creek Formation, which represents about two million, two million years worth of time. Then we have the KT boundary. And then we have the Tullock Formation, which represents about one million years worth of time. And then throughout that three million year window in the rock, we have a series of snapshots where we've collected uh, large amounts of vertebrate microfossils, including um, snakes and lizards, the salamanders, the mammals, the turtles, the dinosaurs, etc., representing all of the vertebrates that lived um, during each of these snapshots. And we can stack those one on top of another and look at changes in the vertebrate aspect of the ecosystem in a very time um, resolution sense on the scale of um, hundreds of thousands of years leading up to this mass extinction event and measure things like changes in the numbers of species or changes in the structure of the communities and weigh those against some of the competing hypothesis, hypotheses for the mass extinction event. Uh, things like whether uh, the mass extinction occurred simply due to the asteroid impact or whether it was a combination of factors, for example, whether the volcanism that started about 500,000 years before the KT impact had any, imp had any effect on those ecosystems that led to those ecosystems being more vulnerable to that impact event that occurred at that, mass, at that uh, KT boundary. And secondly, we can look at the time slices above the KT boundary that lead into the Paleogene period and represent that first one million years worth of time and we can stack those vertebrate fossil localities one upon another and look at a time sequence to see how quickly and the path that the recovery took, how mammals went from being very small uh, mouse to squirrel sized things to becoming uh, sheep and, and dog sized animals that later go on to become things like elephants and bats and, uh, and, and lions and, and, and so on. And we can look at the fate of other organisms, things like birds that go on to be very successful, and the fate of other organisms that survive the mass extinction event but don't reach the same levels of diversity. And we can use that to understand something about the process of recovery and eventually evolutionary radiations.